Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. This is Mike De La Rosa with Pivotal Consulting and today we're going to cover some helpful tips for people managers who are trying to keep their team engaged and productive remotely. We'll be specifically looking at different ways that Outlook and OneDrive and the cloud can be utilized to make managing teams remotely a whole lot easier. So let's dive right in. And today we're gonna to actually be using the new Outlook that was recently released last year. Here at Pivotal Consulting, we've been embracing this remote working uh, for years, and we've picked up on a thing or two. When using Outlook Calendar, have your team start blocking off work time. We've all experienced those days where we're responding to emails and instant messages from our colleagues nonstop. And when we experience that, it feels like we're being extremely productive, but in reality, we aren't getting a whole lot done. But when we intentionally block off time for our important tasks, we give ourselves an opportunity to really focus on our tasks to get them done and to be more productive. Now, obviously you all know how to book time on your schedule, but a pro tip would be to let Cortana do it for you. Cortana is Microsoft's built-in virtual assistant and she delivers insights to your inbox every week. These insights can even be set to automatically add focus time to your calendar each day. Here's how you check your insights. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is actually open up Outlook and when you're in Outlook, you have to actually be clicked into an email. So click on any email that you see uh, in your inbox and then find the ellipsis that is shown inside of the message thread. Um, if you're doing this from the desktop app, uh, the ellipsis up here at the top of the screen for you on the desktop app will also function the same way. But in here again, if you click on the ellipsis, you'll see now the setting for insights or the option to select insights down here uh, at the bottom. Click on insights to see your insights um, for your personal Outlook calendar. Uh, and so here we are on mine for my demo uh, account here. And so there's a couple, there's actually a lot of stuff in here that the insights can do, which is actually really cool. But specifically we're talking about focus time. So you can actually click here on want focus time every single day. And what this is gonna do, it's actually gonna go ahead and take a look at your calendar uh, and analyze when you have consistent free and open times. Uh, and it's gonna automatically bl um, block that time off so that you can have focus time each day of the week. Um, you can also do that here, right here, if you're just doing a random day and you wanna set up some focus time, um, but maybe not something that's automatically planned for you on a weekly basis, um, then you can just do this here, the, use the regular book time to focus option. You can even set lunch hours here, which is kinda nice, and it'll automatically block off time for you to eat. Uh, so again, click on here, one focus time every single day, and it's gonna ask you to create your focus um, plan. So you can set it up for it to be reminders only. And what this will do is it'll actually send you a reminder to set up focus time, um, or you can just have it automatically book time for you, um, which again is really nice because it just analyzes your calendar for you uh, and then blocks the time off accordingly. So if I click on book time now, uh, there we go, it's analyzing my calendar. Let's let it do that. It should be pretty quick. I don't have, I shouldn't have anything on this calendar. Um, okay, so it says here, insights will keep checking to make sure you get one or two hours every single day. That's awesome. Um, that's undisturbed time where you can just sit and focus on your task, which really makes a huge difference in your work week um, and your productivity, uh, and subsequently your team's productivity. Um, so that is how you set and check your focus time here. And now if I were to go to Outlook Calendar, uh, we should see some focus time block. There we go. So we have some focus time automatically blocked off for the uh, for next week. It gave me two hours since I have nothing on my calendar here for this um, demo calendar. It's going to automatically set it up there for me, which is great. All right, back on the PowerPoint now. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more technology insights like this and hit that like button and notification bell to keep up with our videos. This video is part of a two part series that we tied to our corresponding blog that is on our website. If you want to read more about what we are covering here, check out the blog. Uh, the link is in the description. Okay, so the next thing you will want to do uh, is to ask your team to share their calendars. And not just the free and the busy, but the names of their meetings too. 
This simple act of transparency makes it really easy for you to not only see what your team is working on, uh, but it also reduces the back and forth emails when trying to figure out how to schedule important meetings. It's really easy to share your calendar with your team. Uh, let me quickly show you how to do that. Okay, now that we are back in Outlook here, uh, we are already on our calendar. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is when you're on your Outlook calendar, uh, you wanna click here next to your calendar. You should see my calendars here. Um, go ahead and click on the ellipsis next to calendar. And then you're gonna go to sharing and permissions. Uh, here it's gonna, it should automatically be set up for you where it should say people in my organization can view when I'm busy. That is the standard setting that it's gonna be set up as. Um, but to change this, all you do is come here where it says uh, the status currently, the view when I'm busy, and you can change it here to titles and locations, all details. But what you want to set it for is titles and locations. Uh, what, Cause what this does is your team will then be able to see what different meetings you're in and when and where. Uh, and so they can plan smartly around your calendar, uh, which is really, really great. So you can set that to titles and locations. If you wanna be more specific, if you have um, a very large organization uh, and you don't want your whole organization to see all the details, then what you can do is actually just sit here and type in you know, name by name and add them individually that way or add your team that way. But that is how you share your calendar with your team. Okay, and now we are going to be looking at file management in Microsoft 365. And now this is probably the most important part of this entire video. Uh, everyone should be storing their files in Microsoft 365 in the cloud. Whether it's OneDrive, SharePoint, or Microsoft Teams, these documents need to be making it to your company's cloud. If anyone is saving important files on their laptop, you're running the risk of potentially losing these files for good. Um, laptops die, they get stolen, ransomware attacks have teeth, and at the very least, your team ends up having to do all the rework. And that's not fun for anyone. Um, but if everyone keeps their files stored in the cloud, you don't have to worry about permanently losing any of your files. So next time you onboard a new teammate, go ahead and create a private SharePoint site for them to have as a place for them to store all their work related files. If you want a full tutorial on how to create these private SharePoint sites, let us know in the comments below. And, all right, so having files stored on the cloud actually provides a lot of different benefits. So imagine you're working on a document late at night, and when you proofread it the following morning, you see that your paper is worse than when you first started. Well, you can easily restore that file to a version before the big mistakes. And so there's a few ways to view that actually. So here, if you're in OneDrive, and you click the ellipsis, you can actually see the version history directly here. So this is one way to do that, and it shows you the time um, or when it was exactly modified, and you can restore this version, so you can restore the previous version, which is really nice. You can actually also do it from within the file as well. Uh, so if you come here and go to file, uh, and you click on info, you'll see the version history here uh, also. So this is another way to access the version history um, and you can access it as well from the uh, desktop app, just the same. So it's really easy to do that as well. Um, and on the desktop app, you'll see the name of the file here listed at the top uh, and you just click on that and right underneath that, you'll see the version history and you can go then and see the version history through that version or excuse me, through the desktop app as well. But that is exactly how you look at the file, um, the different versions, uh, which the version history, excuse me, which is really, really nice and very helpful. Okay, now imagine if you accidentally deleted an entire synced folder. So before you start to panic, you can easily recover the deleted folder in the recycle bin as long as it was synced. So just go to the SharePoint site that the items were deleted from, click on the recycle bin, which will show you a list filled with everything that has been deleted in the last six months. Now, if you want to restore anything, you simply select the items you want to restore and click the restore button. Once you restore the item, it goes back to the folder it was deleted from. And as a bonus, it even restores the version history of each file. Another benefit of having documents stored in the cloud is that you get real time co-authoring of files. You don't have to worry about emailing files back and forth and trying to combine everyone's work into a single document. You can just share a link to the file uh, to work on it with your team and all changes are saved to the same file as you work. 
You can even have multiple people working on the uh, same file at the same time if you really wanted. You can also at mention people within documents, which is really, really cool because what at mentioning does uh, is it actually lets the person know it sends a physical email to the individual that you are at mentioning and tells them that there was a comment left for them in the document that they need to review. Now, let me really quickly show you how to both access the recycle bin uh, and then show you how to um, work with the files for the co-authoring and then the at mentions. Okay, and to show you how to access the recycle bin, so you go in here to a team site that you have, um, then you see the recycle bin down here. So if you actually click on the recycle bin, I'm not gonna have anything in here because I just created this, um, but in here you'll see every single file that you had um, that you have deleted it saves it for six months so it's really nice actually so if you go in here uh, and you accidentally delete something don't worry it's gonna be in here in your recycle bin as long as it's a synced file uh, or excuse me synced folder okay and then to show you the real-time co-authoring let me open up this file again I can't show you necessarily real-time co-authoring obviously but what I can show you here is up here, you see the share button. So when you share this with people, you can give them access to this file. And as long as they have edit access, whenever you're on here, you'll see the people on the top right corner, they'll show you, you'll see everybody who's, who has the document opened. Uh, and you can actually see where people are typing and writing um, as they do that. And then also the app mentions, again, when you're working in here, um, let's say I have something all the way down here. Uh, and I just want to really leave uh, quickly leave a comment uh, and I'm reviewing this file let me go ahead and leave a comment right here and it, it says right there at mention or comment so I'm gonna at mention uh, Megan here and just say this is a test okay uh, you can even assign that task which is kind of cool and so I can send that message here it's gonna go ahead and send them a notification let me share that and notify and then now Megan Bowen just received an email that is assigned to her that she can resolve and that it's going to let her know that she got that message. So she'll again, she'll get the email here, letting you know that somebody left a comment in a file for her to review. She can click on that directly through the email and it's going to bring her here and open up the file that were uh, that she was mentioned in. All right, everybody, this wraps up our video today. As a recap, we talked about Outlook and how you can use that as a manager to add focus time so that you are optimized and working efficiently with you and your team uh, and also how to manage your files with Outlook and SharePoint to make it very, very easy to work together remotely uh, with your team. Thank you again for watching this video and we will catch you on the next one.